Hi guys, this is Jesse. Welcome to this second tutorial, uh, which is going to be about building an atmospheric uh, ship. So in the following, I will assume that you're familiar with the basics of uh, the tools, the consumables, and how to deploy uh, voxel elements. I will simply focus on everything you need to know in terms of what elements to deploy, how, they how, how to use them, and the different uh, helper tools that come with, uh, with the building of a ship. So, as anything in Dual Universe about building, it starts with the core unit. You can see on the right there are different kinds of core units. Uh, the orange one are what we call static core units. Uh, don't use that if you want to build anything that moves. So certainly not for a spaceship. Uh, this is more for building bases or outposts, things like that. Uh, you want to actually choose the blue uh, version, which is a dynamic core unit. It comes in different sizes uh, that will define you know, how large you can build uh, inside the building zone, how large the, the, the kind of things you can build. Uh, I would pick for the kind of ship we have in mind, a 32 meter, that would be plenty enough. Um, another trick here before I deploy is that you can use the T key, so pressing T and uh, moving the mouse wheel up and down so that you can actually deploy your core unit with a certain altitude. This is going to be very helpful when you want to put things underneath, uh, so I recommend doing that uh, when, you, when you deploy. So around us you can see the building zone and because I'm in build mode I can fly around uh, very easily uh, with my jetpack. So use a C and space bar to actually control up and down and the other, uh, the other keys, uh, the usual keys to, to move around. So okay, we're good. So we have a core unit. I'm going to deploy some basic voxels around it. So really nothing fancy just for a tutorial. This is going to be a very, very basic ship it's just to give you an idea of uh, actually the elements, not the, the, the voxel building part. So I'm sure you guys are going to do some much, much more interesting design uh, once you, you get your hands on the game. Uh, so this is the basic shape. Let me just maybe add a, a wing or something like that, just for the sake of it. Here we go. And another one here. We're good. So this is really just uh, just a simple shape. Uh, the first thing I want to deploy is uh, what we call a gyroscope. So this is I, I would recommend to do this first because it is actually telling the system where is the front of your ship. And until you've done that, a lot of things will simply not work. So I usually deploy that first on top of the core unit. You can put it anywhere you want, but be careful not to orient it on the side like that or something. You have to really put it flat in the front direction. Once this is done, uh, typically you will pick a cockpit. Uh, this is a fighter cockpit, which is good for atmospheric ships or spaceships. Uh, you also have hovercrafts and different types of cockpits. But anyway, for this kind of ship, this is perfect and that's what you need. Uh, just, just a matter of uh, you know, being precise, this is going to be holding your Lua scripting. So you don't need to do any Lua scripting. Everything is automatically generated for you if you don't want to look into this. But just for you to know if you're into programming, this is the element that holds uh, your, your Lua scripting. You can actually edit the Lua script here. Uh, I'm not going to go into any of this now. Uh, this is going to be uh, the topic of another tutorial. So just for you to know, this is the Lua uh, place. Uh, okay, once you have deployed a cockpit, you usually want to add a fuel tank. So I deployed an atmospheric fuel tank. They also are space fuel tanks, so they are not the same. Uh, everything atmospheric is going to be blue. So this is a blue uh, fuel tank. This is it. Now I'm going to add some engines. So this uh, uh, small atmospheric engines. Uh, you see the direction where they push with this little uh, arrow feedback. Uh, okay, we're good. This, this should be fine. Uh, they're blinking because they are not yet connected to a fuel tank. So we can do that. Simply pressing 5 is the link tool. And I click on the fuel tank and on the engine and that connects it to it. You don't really have to do that, in fact, because the, the ship is going to automatically connect any loose uh, engine that is not yet connected to the closest uh, fuel tank when you activate it. But you may want to do a particular wiring if you have any, any design in mind. So this is a, a feature that you can look into uh, for, let's say, advanced uh, situations. Okay, so we've put these two engines. It can go straight, but it cannot yet lift up. What you typically do to lift up is you add uh, what we call a uh, vertical booster. So here I picked a 200 kilonewton vertical booster. It's very powerful. It will lift this, this ship very, very easily. 
Again, it's blinking, but I don't care. It's going to be linked automatically at the end. Uh, so we have lifting capability, uh, moving forward cap capability. Now we need to add talking, so the capability to turn. This is done with adjusters, so these little round things here. I put them all around the ship. Uh, you have to think that these guys are not pushing in the sense that it will generate thrust, but they are actually talking, so they generate rotations. And so you need to put them in particular positions so that they are able to leverage and get your ship to actually turn the way you want. Uh, by the way, this is a good time to spawn the, um, uh, the engineering report that you see on the left, which is going to give you some feedback about whatever happens to the dynamic of your ship when you deploy a certain element. So look at the way uh, the particular pitch, roll and, and the yo of the ship is uh, impacted by the position and the way I put the, the, the adjuster. Same thing if I pick, for example, uh, um, an engine like this, you will see that the front thrust uh, forward capability is impacted depending on the orientation. And so this, this is helping you to figure out what's going to happen if you deploy something in your ship. It also impacts the mass, uh, an estimation of the fuel consumption, and fuel time depending on you know, nominal standard way of flying, uh, and, and all sorts of things like that. So very useful, it's a bit complicated, but once you want to start to optimize your ship and make it really, really uh, uh, efficient, you, you will actually look at this uh, engineering report much, much more often. So, okay, I've added uh, some talk capability I will add a bit more here just to be on the safe side uh, we need something in the front to be able to pitch and I think we're probably good like that okay so uh, by the way the, the report is telling me that my pitch down pitch up is unbalanced and that some engines need to be plugged to a fuel tank so this this report on the top is meant to be empty, saying it's ready. So as long as you have something there, you probably need to adjust your, your ship before you start the flight. Okay, so now we have talking forward, upwards. Let's add some braking capability. So this is done with atmospheric flaps. Uh, you can put them really anywhere you want. For the moment, it doesn't matter. But they are going to generate uh, braking capability. So in other words, they oppose your speed. They don't generate any thrust and they don't consume any fuel. But they are going to oppose your, your current speed. So this is very helpful if you want to brake, uh, which is a simple way to control your speed, especially when you go very fast. Uh, Braking is done by pressing control when you fly your ship. So I recommend adding flaps. Uh, by the way, the equivalent of flaps uh, for space ships is called retro engines. Uh, okay, so now the last thing I'm going to add here is uh, what we call a remote controller, this little square thing here. Uh, the remote controller is used to actually pilot your ship uh, from the outside, as if you were in the cockpit, but actually just staying uh, next to it. So this is very useful to help you assess the dynamic of your ship, just look it flying around. And if you're more into programming again with Lua, this is the way to go if you want to make a drone or something that is sort of autonomous and like following you or something like that. So let me turn off the engineering report. Uh, we are done with this ship. I think it's going to fly. I'm going to stop build mode by pressing B. And the last thing I need to do is to uh, refuel it. So I, I press the refueler. Uh, it's currently 206. And on the right, you see there are different types of fuel. I'm going to pick nitron, which is the fuel for atmospheric engines. Uh, the other one below is cargo. There will be a lot of different fuels uh, in the future in the game. For the moment, you only have those two. So just pick the one that fits for uh, atmospheric ships and we're good to go. So I think this ship is complete. I'm going to actually activate it with the remote controller so I can have a sense of it flying. So it's done. So you see the different adjustors are pushing so it can turn around uh, in one way or another. I'm going to press space to actually uh, activate the vertical boosters and get some thrust. And oops, almost fell down, but okay, I'm fine now. So it, it flies pretty well, right? So let's just uh, land it. By the way, you also have landing gears, but I didn't bother to add them at this stage. Uh, you press, if you want to stop the remote control, or actually any control unit you want, you just simply press uh, control backspace. That is going to end any running session. So that's the way I, I use to, to put it down here. We're good, so let's go inside the cockpit and fly this 
ship. All right, so here we are inside. You can see right away this these uh, widgets on the cockpit, uh, they are very useful. This is the container that shows you how much fuel you've left, how much time you've left. Uh, this is the speed control and the throttle. So if I actually uh, move the mouse wheel up, it will actually increase the throttle, so the thrust. You can see here how much kilonewton is pushing. As my speed is growing, the air resistance is increasing as well until they equilibrate. Uh, if I want to shut down the thrusters, uh, I just press the middle mouse button and it will actually set the thrust to zero. My speed is slowly decreasing. I can use my brakes with control and slow even faster. So that's how it works, the basics, air resistance, no thrust thrust at this, uh, at this stage, of course. The other interesting thing is the atmospheric feedback you have here. If I put maximal thrust and start to go in space, sort of, you will see that my atmosphere level is decreasing and so is my thrust decreasing as well. They are coupled. So when it goes to zero, basically my atmospheric thrust is going to go down to zero and I will not be able to control this ship. So there are two situations that can happen. If I have enough uh, initial speed, I might actually escape the gravity wheel and start to orbit or simply go straight in line in space. Uh, and most likely, if you don't have enough thrust, what happens is that your ship is going to just fall down and get back into the atmosphere. So that's about it. Uh, so you are inside your ship, above in the air, and that's the tutorial about building atmospheric spaceships. I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching and see you soon in the next tutorial.